Okay, good evening everyone. We in part two of the series of classes that we will give about the prophecy, the prediction in the, in the Bible, in the Tanakh, by the prophets about an event under the title, The War, The Gog and Magog War. So I'll summarize in brief what we covered last uh, week. We uh, ask few questions, I'll repeat them. <clears throat> what is Gog and Magog? Um, we went through the, the first few uh, verses in chapter 38 in Yechezkel, and we find out that Gog is the name of a person, Magog is the name of a nation, and he, Gog, is the leader of this nation called Magog, and he's going to a war against gathering with him all the nations of the world and the purpose or the, 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 the place that they're heading to are the mountains of Israel. We saw that in the verses, in the, in the, in the verses very clearly, that the war will occur on the mountains on is, of Israel. Uh, we asked... Uh, what will be the reason and what will be the time? So about the time, we saw that the first, in the first few verses in 38, Yechezkel described it at, it's gonna be at the end of days. This is very general, but he said it will be on the land of Israel when the land of Israel will be deserted for a long, long time. And when it's re, established again, re-flourished again, rebuilt again, right after that, the war will occur. So from that, we, dis we deduce that this war never happened yet. Because since the time, in the last 100 years, the land of Israel are, in a way, is rebuilt again. People come, Jews come from all over the world. So... It makes it ready, but this war never happened yet. All the war that we were in, we have in the last 70 years since the establishment of the state of Israel were local wars. Was not a war in the magnitude that uh, Yechezkel described. So it's still ahead. In Israel. In Israel. Yeah. It's still ahead, but Probably it's not too far from where we're holding now in the time scale. <clears throat> now, what uh, will be, what will be the reason? Here we, we stop in this point. What will be the reason? There are two reasons why the war will occur, will, will happen, what will start it. The two reasons are the real reason, the real one, the real reason, and what God think his reason is for. So but the, in this, we, we stopped the last time, and the main question will be that, I don't know if we'll get to it even today, what will be the results of this war? But we have many things to learn before. Right, right. That was another question that raised because after we learn that Gog is the leader of Magog, so what is Magog? Who is Magog? Could we, could we identify it? Or there are may, more specific signs to show us. So we are now about to get into this. So if you have those pages, uh, not the one that I, get, I, gave, I gave last week, but the one from today, it started with number 11 up there, okay? So the verse number 11, number 12, we covered last uh, week. I repeat them, okay? Let's read them inside. And I read the original, as I said. The translation is, in many cases, not accurate. But you'll have the sense reading the non-accurate translation that you have, okay? So he said the following. He speaks to Gog and he said, you're going to use the fact that the people in the land of Israel at the time of the war will not be ready. They will not expect 
whatsoever such an attack. And you, 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 you'll think that this is your opportunity. You'll say, I will come to this uh, open, open uh, towns, I will attack them when they're not expecting me, they think they are secure. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, why I'm gathering the nations of the world to do this, to do this attack? What's the reason of the war from his point of view? Verse number 12. לשלול שלל ולבוז בז, להשיב ידך על חורבות נושבות, ואל עם מאוסף מגויים, עושה מקנה וקניין, יושבי על טבור הארץ. So, the reason is to take spoil and attack those who just rebuild the old cities, the old towns, and see, uh, see the description over here. Ve'el am me'usaf migoyim. To a people, a nation, that gather from all over the nations of the world. They build in this place a economic superpower. They will be, and, and they are sitting or in the center of the world. Meaning the center of the world financially will be the land of Israel. Interesting. And then, so, and the idea is that he wants to, he's not happy with the fact that the Jews that just rebuild new place holding the, the economy of the world, that why he will co convince all the people, all the nations of the world to come to make this attack. Okay, so the next verse speaks about that Sheva and the Dan those nations and the Socharim, Socharei Tarshish, the, the people who, the businessmen, will tell you, Halishlol Shalal, Atava, Lavoz, Bazikal Kealecha, you really mean to do this to just take the, 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 the money from the, the, the silver, the gold, to take all this booty. Okay, let's go to to verse number 14. Lachem. Therefore, he naveh ben adam ve'amarta legog. Hashem says, Yechazkel Anvi said to go the following. This is the message. Ko amar Hashem Elokim. Those are the words of God. Halo bayom ahu b'shevet ami Yisrael lavet tachteida. At that day, when my nation, my, my people, the Jews, will stay in their place, and they Thought they will feel that they are secure, and you will try to use this. You have to know the following. You will come from your place. Verse number 15, then turn the page. And he has a very, very interesting hint, more than hint. It's almost clear. What is the meaning of the word You will come from your place. Where is your place? At the edge of the north. Now, let's put together the, 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 the thing that we know already. Remember, Yechazka says, I, I, I read it last week, that the war will happen on the mountains of Israel. So now, what we have to do is to go up to the mountains of Israel and try to look north. But it, it doesn't say just north. It says, let me see how they uh, translate over here, furthest. furthest, furthest. Actually, the accurate translation is the edge, the edge of the north. Now, if you know the map, Let's just go by elimination, to eliminate what not, would not fit over here. The, no, north, north of Israel, the north of Israel, right, right on the north we have Lebanon. Lebanon could not fit, why? Few reasons, first of all, the Lebanese are not from the, 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 the descendants of Yefet, remember? Magog is a nation of, from Bnei Yefet. 
So the Lebanese are Arabs, some of them Christians, some of them Muslims, but they are Arabs. The other thing, slowly, first let's finish with Lebanon. First of all, they are, oh, the things that we saw before that, remember it says that it's described Magog like a superpower. It says that each one of the nation will be scared to go to this war, but when they know that the umbrella, right, the Pasuk says, the, the verse says, you will protect them, you will give them a, a feeling of security. Meaning, he described this nation, Magog, as a superpower. So, Lebanon of today is not a superpower. They're they, 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 they fighting between themselves, the Arabs, so they, they're out of the picture. Go further north, you'll get to Syria. Syria is a big country, but again, it's Arabs. It is Arab, so it's not fit the picture. Go further north, you got to Turkey. And Turkey is very interesting because Turkey used to be a superpower in the Middle East, right, about 100 years ago, before the British. And the only problem with Turkey is, first of all, since the land of Israel rebuilt it, they are not superpowers since then. And who knows what's going to be in the future. But right now, it doesn't fit from another thing. They are, first of all, right now, they're not a superpower. The other thing is, we said that Turkey is Tiras. Tiras is Turkey. And Tiras is the younger brother of Magog. So if we're talking that the leader is Magog and Tiras is Turkey, so Turkey comes with, but Turkey is not the main thing. So go further north. You know what you hit? Russia. You'll hit Russia. And it, what? Iran is in, is in the east. It's not in the north. And it says over here clearly, Uvata mi mekomcha mi yarketei tzafon. Tzafon is north. And yarketei tzafon, as I said, is the edge of north. So if you go all the way to the north, you'll get to the pole. There is nothing more than then you go out, you go to the other side of the globe. So if you talk about the edge of the globe, north to Israel, it says, it's a farm. You come from the edge of north when the battlefield will be the land of Israel. So it seems Russia and Russia fit to the picture amazingly. Why? It's a superpower. Has influence before it was the the the, the in the, in the Soviet unions, there are many nations that was part of it. And remember, it's described over here that Gog is the president of Magog, but he's the president of Meshech Betuval, which is his brother or nations, which is fit very well. It's a superpower. And they have a problem financially. They're a superpower from army-wise, but the regular person, the regular citizen in Russia are poor. They have big problems. They take all the money and invest in nuclear and other stuff, but they are poor. So it seems very, goes very well with this interest of them to take the power of economy to themselves. And they will convince the other nations because it doesn't, it's not fair according to them that the Jews will hold the, 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 the power of uh, financial. How did we eliminate the Arabs? Like, who did they descend from? Uh, the Arabs are the descendants, according to their tradition and according to our tradition, the fathers of the Arab nations are Yishmael. Right. Yishmael is the son of Avram Avinu, and Avram is a Semite. He's not from Bnei Yefet. Oh, he's from Shem. You're right, but not just this. We know who was the mother of Ishmael. She was Hagar. Hagar was Egyptian. And Egypt is, is Ham. Ham has four sons. Uvnei Ham, Kush, Umitzrayim, Ufutu, Knan. So in the good case, he is a mix of Semite, the Arabs. They are a mix of Semite and Hams, but not, but not the Yefet. And we know here that the, the, the leader of this war will be from Bnei Yefet. So it's not a war with the Arabs, even though 
the Arabs will come among the other nations because he will gather all the other, all the nations. So the Arabs will go with him also, but they will not be the main thing. Yeah, this is what nation? What? What nation is Yefet? Who? I, I don't get What nation is what? Yefet. Oh, Yefet is Yefet. He's the son of, of Noah. Yeah, but what, what nation? Okay. So according to, according to what we analyzed last week, let me repeat again the names in the Torah of Yefet. He has seven sons, Yefet. Some of them we could recognize from the words. Some of them change, the, cha the, the name change. Change. Let's see. Uvnei Yefet, Gomer, Umagog. Magog is our hero here, right? But his older brother is Gomer. Yeah, the next verse says, Uvnei Gomer, who are the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz Verifat Vetogarma, and Ashkenaz is Deutschland. So Ashkenaz is the son of the son of Gomer. And Gomer is Germany. Gomer, you see in Hebrew that the same Gimel Mem Reish are the letters that appear in the name Germany also, right? So according to this, we're talking about European nations. And I said last week, if you remember, that after the Teva was landed on the mountains of Ararat, they split. Bnei Ham went to Africa, Bnei Shem stayed in the Middle East, and Bnei Yefet went headed north. Now some of them we know. We know Turkey. Turkey is Tiras, is the seventh son of Yefet. Again, what's the names? Uvnei Yefet, Gomer, Umagog, Umadai, Veyavan, Vetuval, Umeshech, Vetiras. So Tiras is Turkey, Yavan is Greece. So those two European nations, and Gomer is Germany, now we have to find out, and probably the way to look for them will be in Europe. Who is Magog? So according to the theory that we just put together right now, it seems very well fit Russia. Magog, because it's a superpower at the edge, there is, okay? But it's not the only thing, yeah. Yeah, but it's in the north of Israel. If you look from Israel, from Israel, it's the north. Of course, it's a big country. It goes this way and that way, but, but if you go all the way to the north, you hit Russia. Okay, it's, it's spreading here, spreading there, but it's in the north. But they're also considered Asiatic people, not just Western people. Okay, right, right. Did you say that the Brahma was Western? What is this? Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. To Germa, Tiras is Tiras is is, is Paras. Yeah. You're right, you're right. I made a mistake. To Germa is Turkey. To Germa is Turkey, and Tiras is Paras. Now we, if if Tiras is Paras and Madai is mentioned over there, remember the Megillah, Paras and Madai. So they were close. Again, it's in the north of Russia, close to Europe, to 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 Asia, but in the border. Between Russia, I don't know who's Madai today, but it's it's a it's a nation that was between Russia to Persia. I don't know to get to Kyrgyzstan, Pakistan. I don't know these places. Fine. Now, um, okay, I have another indication that it very well guess to think it's Russia. But let's, uh, I'll get to it later. Let's continue. We're going, to, uh, so from verse 15, we know that the nation of Magog are in, at the edge of north, near Ketei Tzafon, from the further north. Okay, let's go to ver, the next verse. Ve'alita alami Yisrael, verse 16. Ve'alita alami Yisrael ke'anam lechasot ha'aretz be'acharit ha'yamim tihiyeh. You will come on my nation, Israel, Hashem says. Remember we said this, that will be, it's like a cloud who covers the, the earth from the, from the light of the sun. And here it says, It will be at the end of days. And listen to the last few words of this verse. Hashem says here to God, I will bring, I will bring you to my land, and here's the real reason. We ask, what will be the reason of Milchamed Gog Magog? So, 
There is a rationalization that he will make, why he wants to do it, Gog, the attacker, but there is the real reason, why Hashem wants the entire event to happen. And the, it's here written in, in hints, in the, at the end of the, of the chapter, it will be very clear. So what, what's written over here? I, Hashem says, I will bring you, I will make you, I will put this crazy idea in your head to go to this war. Why? Because I want the nations of the world, knowing me, knowing Hashem, I will make you the tool I will make you the tool of the, through you, or through the events that are going to happen, you will be the proof for the existence of God. I'm going to bring you there, and what's going to happen to you there will be the proof for the nation of the world, for the history, or for the nation of the world, that, that I'm ashamed, that I, I'm the creator of the universe. The way to make it clear, knowledge, for everyone in the world will be this event. How it's gonna happen, let's see. Verse 17. And here is again, very interesting piece of information. I'm not sure how they translate it over here, but let me explain to you what's the meaning of the things. The, the, the prophet says the following, that when the things gonna happen, when the events start to happen, people will be surprised. And people will look at you and look at the Bible, they will look about the description that the prophets described this event many, many years ago, and only when the events will start to really apply, then they will be in shock and will say, wow, this is you? What that means, that right before the event will happen, no one will know what is Magog. And this is exactly the situation today. We want to try to verify who is Magog. Why we want to try to verify it? Because it's not clear. Because right now, we do not know any nation in the world but this name, Magog, right? So the, the prophet knew about it, that it will not be known until the event will happen. And when the event will happen, people will look at the attacker Look at what the, the, the prophet says about him and say, wow, this is it. But they will not be aware of it until it will happen. That actually, what's this verse say? Yeah. You know, um, at the top on 15, it says uh, many people, many mounted on horses. Yes. Yeah, I relate to this last week. I'll repeat it again. Yeah. I relate to this last week. You have to understand that the prophet lived Cheskel lived 2,500 years ago. And when God gave the prophets a scenario or a prophecy, they have to say it and write it. And it should be understood to the people in, this genera in their generation. So if you were right over here tanks or nuclear or missiles, no one will understand what he's talking about. So he... Well, he could say something from the sky. Or the I'll tell you how he did it. How he did it. He said, he mentioned all these horses and things, the old stuff that used to be the war things, but he mentioned twice in this chapter that this, this event will be at the end of days. Yeah. Meaning, he relied on our intelligence to just update the best tools of war up to the the, the end of the day. So that's what, because it has to be understood in the last 2,500 years. And therefore, actually what he's saying, you will come with a big, big power, army power. And let's see what's going to happen when you will come with this army power. But it's not the literal thing, horses or not horses. 
Because it said it's going to be after the end of days. Yes? Uh, it's very interesting that you say people will look back on what the previous meeting you said right. and realize, oh my God, they said it before. So what happens if somebody like you and who says, no, that, you pay attention? He speaks, Ilmiyahu speaks about Babel, about Iraq, and Iraq came from the north, even though they're in the east. But here, he speaks about Nevi'e Israel. See how it says in the Pasuk, Biyad Avadai Nevi'e Israel. Nevi'e is plural. Prophets, right? I'm going to show you that there are two, there are many Nevi'im that spoke about, many prophets who spoke about the war, the, the, the war of Gog and Magog. But, Two major ones are Yechazkel that we read reading right now and another one. Therefore he mentioned those in plural, Nevi'e Israel, and people will not know what's going on until the event will take place and then they'll say, wow, it's fit what happened before. And he said, Ha'atahu, this is you, meaning his identification, the prophet, the prophet says, I know that his identification will, will be not known. He mentioned that over here. Only when it's gonna apply. Okay, now what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? They will come, he will gather all the nation of the world, they will come to this war. What's gonna happen? What does Hashem prefer for him? Verse 18. Where's the location? The location, yeah, the location mentioned very clear. What will not be known, who is the attacker? That will not be known. Now, what's going to happen when they will come? Chapter, um, uh, verse 18. At that day, when he actually will come to the land of Israel, to the, the ground of Israel, I'm going to be very mad, Hashem says. I'm going to be very angry. Now, what's going to happen? Next verse. Okay, let me tell you. First of all, I have to give you the rest of the pages. Of the... I'll tell you in a big, in my words, what's going to happen. What's going to happen? This is the continuation. This war will have, according to the laws of nature, no chance, no way that they will not win it. They, the attackers. According if the probability, the pro if you, you'll ask, you know, all the nations of the world come to attack Israel, for sure, according to the laws of nature, they have to win. But they're going to lose. And that will be the surprise. But the another surprise is they will not lose the war because the Jewish people will protect themselves from them and win them. That's not what's going to happen. It will not be a war of an army against army. It will be the war of all the nations of the world on the Jewish people, and the Jewish people will not shoot even one shot. And even though Without it, they will lose. How? Hashem himself is going to fight with them. How? Right. Like what happened in Mitzrayim. Hashem yilachem lachem. But how? Will be three parts of the defeat of their army. Number one, mentioned over here in chapter 19. Let's see it. Uvekinati be'esh evrati dibarti imlo bayom ahu because I'll be so mad, I'm gonna, Hashem said, God says, I'm gonna make an earthquake in the land of Israel. Yes, but you have to be, you have to be patient to hear to the end. I know, what I'm gonna say now will raise many questions, but be patient, wait until the end. We'll be, a big earthquake, actually it will be the biggest earthquake ever. And it will be on the land of Israel. And because the entire land will be covered with the millions of soldiers that will come with Gog, 
That will be the way of Hashem to defeat this army. They will make them killed by this earthquake. I know what you're going to ask. You want to ask, and what about us? Yeah. And what about the Jews? I know. <laughs> Leave this question now aside. It will be okay. It will be okay. It will be okay. I could tell you in advance one thing. Gog and Magog war is a very good thing for us. Very bad things for the attackers. How it's going to happen? Wait. Wait. First of all, it will be a huge earthquake. In this huge earthquake, the vast majority of the army of the attackers will be destroyed, will be killed. Again, without a war against, army against army, earthquake. In order to understand what magnitude is this earthquake, let's go to the next verse. But first of all, in, in verse 19, he says, Bayomahu yeraash gadol. Big, huge earthquake. Now we know that the measurement of earthquake is by the ladder of Richter. Richter, what the, how do you say it in English? Richter, Sulam Richter. The ladder of Richter, right? So there are different magnitudes. Number, let's say seven, is, is, is scary, is big. Number eight is catastrophic. Number nine, I don't know if it ever happened, but it's, it's more than catastrophic. Number 10, I don't know how to describe it, but one thing I could tell you, this Mr. Richter probably was a great scientist in the geology because people, you know, measure according to his, I never knew him, I never met him, I know one thing, he never learned chapter 38 <laughs> in Yechezke. How do I know that? Because if you go to the next verse, there is a description of the effect of this earthquake. Don't be scared. Just let's look at it. What's going to happen? There will be a huge earth and a earthquake, and the, the huge earthquake will be in the land of Israel. But it will have an international impact. And the description is in verse 20. Ve'ra'ashumi panayim, d'gayam, ve'of ha'shamayim, ve'chayat ha'sadeh. וכל הרמס הרומס על האדמה, וכל האדם אשר על פני האדמה, ונהרסו הערים ונפלו המדרגות, וכל חומה לארץ תיפול. You see the translation? All the fish in the entire oceans, all the birds in the sky, all the beasts on the field, all the creeping that going on the ground, all human beings on earth, Every human being anywhere in the world will feel it. Mountains will overthrow. Cliffs are, it will be a huge earthquake that everywhere in the globe will be filled. And many uh, walls will fall. That will be a huge one. And in this earthquake, the vast majority of the attackers will be destroyed. What will be with the Jews? It's not like you know you spill the water of the of the with the baby. We will be there. Are we there or the people, the Jews that will be there, or the Jews will be all over the world. So here, as I said in the last uh, shiur, last class, this prophecy is addressing Gog. It's not addressing us, even though we're involved. And it's very interesting what happened to us, because we learn it and we want to know. But you have to understand that Yechazka is not talking to us. He's talking to him, to, to the attacker. So he mentioned it or described it from his point of view. There is another prophet by the name Zechariah that talked to us. And because it's not fair to just hold your intention, I'll tell you that in the description of this war by the Novi Zechariah, it says the following. Bayomahu yagen Hashem be'ad Yoshev Yerushalayim. Hashem promised that he will protect the ones who dwell in Yerushalayim, meaning the Jews. So, it will be an earthquake. This earthquake will destroy the enemy, but the Jews 
who lives in who dwell in Yerushalayim will be saved. Yerushalayim will be the the secure place to be at the time, even though they're going to attack Yerushalayim. But the end, this will be the place. Now people ask me, I give this year, this class many many times in the last few decades, few three, you know, three decades all over, including in the places in in in, in Israel, in Eretz Israel. And people ask me, what about Petah Tikva? <laughs> what about place that not Yerushalayim? So I said, listen, Yerushalayim is not a place. Yerushalayim is, is, is a notion. Yoshev Yerushalayim are the Jews. The Jews, Yerushalayim is the center, is, is the place of Beit HaMikdash. It, this is the place. Yagen Hashem Bad Yoshev Yerushalayim, meaning the Jews will be saved. All of them will see. You need to, to, to buy insurance? Probably. What that includes, we'll see later. But in general, in general, Hashem will protect the Jews who are attacked by those enemies. So it will be a selective earthquake. And if you'll ask how, how, how could be a selective earthquake? Meaning some people will be hurt and some people not, and it will be by the, if you're Jewish or not Jewish, the answer is yes. Hashem could do everything, right? And he did it in the past. Remember where? It happened. It happened. In the desert by the Korach. Remember that? Korach Vadatot. It was an earthquake and Korach swallowed the, 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 the ground, opened its mouth and swallowed only the one who need to be swallowed. So if it's random, you're right. But because it's not random, Hashem is going to make it so Hashem knows, Hashem is in control of everything, and he will, he will decide who is going to be swallowed and who is not. Anyways, let's go back. I know it's very interesting to see what will be with us, but remember, we are re learning now Yechazkel. Yechazkel speak about them. So let's continue from their point of view, and then we will get to the whole thing about what will be our attitude, what should we do, we now. Well, where is the best place to be? Stay here, go there. What's going to happen with us? But that's later. Let's finish the chapter, at least today, those few verses that we have to finish, okay? So that will be one of three stages, as I said before, of the defeat of the enemy. Earthquake. But there are survivors also from earthquakes. And because there are so many, they, the survivors could be a day, enough dangerous. So what will be with them? Chapter, uh, verse 21. And his stage number two. After the vast majority of those, this army of the enemy will be destroyed by the, killed, destroyed by this earthquake, the one who left will have such a chaos that they will start to shoot each other. That's called Cherev Ish Be'achiv Te'yeh. They will start to fight each other. Remember, this army is not a natural army. Those are all the armies of the world that will come to this project with plan of cooperation, right? But because of the earthquake will be such a chaos that they will not know, know where it's coming from and they will start to shoot each other. And many of them, of the survivors, will be destroyed by this Second part, which is uh, a, a, a fight between them. Okay? After this second stage, those who will survive, those soldiers from the enemy that will survive the earthquake and survive the sword that will be in between them, they will get the last thing, which is the dessert. Not pleasant at all. Look at verse 22. Venishpatiti ito bedever uvedam. Vegesham shotev vapnel gavish, esh begufrit and tira la vala gapa, valamim rabim asherito. Those who will survive this from the enemy will get a plague that it will be a magifa, a plague that will go from one to one and they will die from it, from this. Another thing is a rain of stones that will come from the sky. And that will finish the entire army. 
of all the soldiers of all of the nations of the world. Last verse. Last verse of this chapter. Chap verse 23. And this is something that needs explanation. So this, what it says over here, when this thing will happen, what's, what will be the, the result? Look at the first two words of this verse. If you do not know, this is the source of Yitgadal Kadash Shmei Rabba. This is it. This is the source in the Tanakh. Yitgadal Kadash Shmei Rabba came from here. And what is this? What is the meaning of this? People know it's Kaddish, but they do not really understand the words. Vidgadilti, meaning I will grow, I'll become big. Hashem says, I'll become big. Vidgadishti, I'll become unique and special, holy. Vidgadilti, Vidgadishti, Venodati. And then all the nations of the world will know, will be no more believe in God. It will be a knowledge. They will know. Why? Because according to the laws of nature, this event is impossible. All the nations of the world come with the best army, best soldiers, best, best uh, uh, equipment. There is no way that, that they will not win. And when Hashem says, and it will be written in advance, many, many years, in the words of the, of the prophets, that that's not going to happen. And it will happen exactly the way it was predicted. That will give a proof for the skeptical atheist that there is God. Because without it, how, any, how, how this event could happen and how anyone could know about it thousands of years before it happened. So the event of Gog and Magog has one purpose, to prove, to prove, not, to make it a fact that no one could doubt that there is a master of the universe and he's controlling everything. That will be uh, one of the event in the process of the end of days to reveal the truth, the spiritual truth that there is God. That will be the purpose. And God will be the tool to do it. And now there is another question. Why? Why God? And why, if Hashem wants to reveal himself, there are cleaner way to do it. Why it should be with this bloodshed? Why it should be through this horrible event? Who is left? Only Jews are left. Oh, okay. Now, now another thing that all of us should know. Christians... Take this Gog and Magog war and make it as the apocalypse, right? That the end of the world. Wrong. It's not the end of the wrong, the world. Hashem said that he's going to destroy not the world, but the soldiers that will come from all over the world. When nations will send soldiers, they will send soldiers, but the population will stay over there. And they will not be harmed. So the purpose of the entire event is that after the event, those, those who will survive from the nations of the world will know the truth. So therefore, it's not the end of the world. Someone has to learn something from this. But you know what? There is another f interesting thing. Look at the verse. And I will be known to the eyes of the nations. What do you mean? The eyes. Before the technology, it was impossible. But today there are TVs, right? They will see, they will watch the war from Australia. Because when the soldier always come the media, right? So the media will show everything. It says over here, if they're in Australia, how are they going to see it? Unless you have a media. So the prophet also knew about the media. Right? That it will be in live. This, this death event will be live all over the world. Is the media going to go into the earth point? What is this? Is the media going to go into the earth Yeah, they're going everywhere. They're going. I don't know. 
Listen again, because this event is not a random but planned, Hashem will have his ways to protect the one who needs in order to get the results of it. So, hit gadilti vit kadishti. Ah, okay, that's that's grammar. Let's let's keep the grammar now. Now that's the way to say it. That's the way, the right way to say it. Yes, it's all from one chapter in Yehaska. Now, there is another chapter, chap the following chapter, Lametet thirty nine, that also speaks about it, but doesn't add significant um, uh, details that we have to go through. You know what, one, one thing uh, from, from the next chapter that I will quote here, people will ask, Jews will ask themselves, where will be the best place to be at the event? When the, the event will happen? Here, there. So you have to know that the secure, as I said before, the secure place to be will be there. Will be in Yerushalayim. Will be in Eretz Israel. Why? Because it says in the next chapter, that when this war gonna happen there, uh, let me quote the verses from chapter 39. Do I have it here? Yeah. Okay, he says the following. In chapter 39, you, have, you do not have it now in front of you. In uh, verse six, seven, it says, Ki ani dibarti nuhum Hashem Elokim v'shilachti esh b'magog. It'll be a fire. I don't know if it will be caused by this earthquake or not, but it says, I will send fire in Magog themselves, in the place where they came from. But he said not just be Magog, and for those nations who live on islands, Sec thinks that they are secure. And you have to know that Australia is a big island. And United States and America is a big island. North America, South America. So it, it doesn't seem that over here it will be safer than there. We have to understand the, con the, the idea, the, the, the entire concept. In order to understand what will be the safest place and how we should be ready, personally and nationally, to this event. Okay, for that, I, mean, I want in the time that we have now, maybe 10 minutes, uh, to show you something else. We finish the chapter. The chapter ended with these words, Yitgadal v'yitkadash me'rava. That's the end. This is, this is the purpose of the entire thing. But I want to add another very interesting piece of information, not from the verses, but from the Medrash. So far we just went on the simple understanding of the word that mentioned in the, in the, in the chapters, in the, in the Nevoah. But there is a Medrash. The Medrash is in Sefer Vayikra in Parashat Emor. And the Medrash describes something like this. Rabbi Levi. Rabbi Levi is one of the Amoraim in the, in the Medrash. He says the following. Oilaim l'reshem. Poor the wickeds, poor the wickeds, that always waking up in the morning thinking how to destroy the Jewish people. And we have to know that this is a fact, we, we do not know how to, to, to explain it, but this is a fact, we sang it in every Leil HaSeder, in the Haggadah, right? Remember Vehisha Amdala Avoteinu Shalanu? Not one uh, wicked wanted during the history to kill us. Every generation, and it was written hundreds of years ago, and it's relevant to every period of time in the history of the Jewish nation. And it's very interesting. Why? Why? What makes us so drawing fire? from anti-Semites that want to kill us. There is a very big reason for this. We represent something, we, if we know it or not, we represent something that's hard for them to digest. From one side, we are the chosen people, right? They will tell you, they will tell you that we are the chosen people, right? Because they agree, because they believe in the Bible, 
They agree that we are the only nation ever that God himself spoke to the entire nation. So we are the chosen people. So from one side, we are the chosen people. We brought the Torah to the world. We brought the Ten Commandments that they appreciate, right? So what should be the result of this? They should honor us, love us. But they do just the opposite. They do, they do just the opposite. No one like Christianity, since it was established, that feed anti-Semitism, they themselves killed us by the Inquisition, by the, by the programs, but not just them. Even the Nazis, Yibash, Man, Zichram, that were not religion, but they could not do what they did in World War II without the cooperations of the Polans, of the Hungarians, for after many, many years of brainwash by Christianity that we killed God, we killed their God. It was one of ours, what they want. From they make it God, they make him God, and they blame us. And because of that, millions of Jews were murdered brutally by Christianity. What happens to the Aftahat Avonavim? That will be. It's still, still coming. Right now, okay, anyways, we are the chosen people. We brought the Ten Commandments. They should appreciate that, but they're killing us. What's the reason for this? this? The Gemara says, why Har Sinai called Har Sinai? The, the Mount of, Mount of Sinai. So there are many reasons according to the pshat. Because of the burning bush, the, the bush called sne in Hebrew, but the, the Medrash says, Lama nikra shmo har sinai, sheshama yarda sin'a la'olam. The fact that we got the Torah caused the hatred by the other nations. Why? Explain the Maharal, it's very deep. He said the following, human being is intelligent and with the intelligency, Oh, the, this gift, we should verify the truth and live according. But we have impulses and other things that we do not live according to what we understand. So we have conflict in this, between us. Until the Torah was given, everyone basically could do whatever they want. When God, the creator of the universe, gave instructions, detailed in instructions about what moral is, that make the people who get it relate to the ability to perform their state as human being in their higher level. Those who didn't give it, who, who didn't get it, they have less ability to fulfill the potential of the human being. That caused jealousy. And I always give an example. The best student in the class is the favorite of the teachers. But what about the students? The other students, they hate him or her. Why? Because she, she, she create or he create higher standards. If he could, if she could, you all could. So their success will be a blame for the others, not the reason of the hatred. We get the Torah, we got the Torah, but they hate us. Same way in the army, you know, the best soldier gets medals from his commanders, but the other soldiers are jealous, or not just jealous, they feel if he could, you could do, so that obligated you. That the cause of the hatred. We represent the absolute truth in the world. The fact that there is a creator, that there is a program, that there is a purpose, and people do not want his purposes, they want their purposes. I don't tell me what to do. This is the deep down, the hatred. Now, during the history, in every generation, I have to tell you, don't be naive. Every morning when we're waking up, millions of anti-Semites around the world wake up and with one thing in their mind, yeah. how to get rid of the Jews. <laughs> this is it. So the metros relate to them. And the Medrash speaks about the leaders of those anti-Semites during the history. And he brings a few examples. Look what he says, something very interesting. The first anti-Semite ever was Esau, the brother of Yaakov, right? He decided clear, I'm going to murder my brother. It's not a joke. It's serious. 
and it's still relevant. They want to kill us, the Esau and his descendants. Who did he want to kill? Yaakov. Now, the matter says the following, that Esau decided to kill Yaakov, but he said, I have to be smart. I have to do it in a perfect way. So let's learn from the history. Before me, Esau says, was also two brothers that one want to get, get rid of the other. Cain and Heaven, right? Cain and, and Heaven. So Esau says, the measure says the following. Cain was jealous of Hevel and he wanted to get rid of him, but he didn't calculate it to the end. Why? There are two brothers that inherit the entire world, and he wants the entire world for himself. See, I'll kill my brother, I will be the king. He forgot one thing, that his parents still young, and they could bring more kids to the world, and then he will no, we gain nothing by killing his brother. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Shet was born after, right? So Esau says, I have to learn from this. So therefore he said, I'll wait until my father will die, and then I'll kill my brother. Then you will not bring, be able to bring another children to the world. Okay? We know that he lost. If with, even with his calculation, he didn't succeed to kill Yaakov, right? Okay, let's go further in the history. We get into Paro, the hero of those uh, parashiot that we read this Shabbatot, right? So Paro also wants to get rid of the Jewish nation, and he also wants to learn lessons from the history. So we look at Esau, he said Esau tried, right? And Esau was even smart. He tried to learn from Cain. But his calculation was missing something. He didn't know that, um, he didn't take into account that until Yitzchak, his father, will die, Yaakov could have more children. So even if Yitzchak will die, and he will kill Yaakov, still the children of Yaakov could be Taking uh, existing, right? So yeah, Paro says, I'm going to learn from this. I have to know, I have to, the first priority is to take, get rid of the kids. So what did he do? His first decree was, The baby, just the baby born, kill him. Don't let the children grow. And by this, by this act, the Jewish nation will be vanished. But his decree was on who? on the boys only. So they will take the girls because the nation not going, according to the goyim, it's not going through the mother but through the father, okay? He also miscalculate because even if he will succeed to kill all the boys, the girls will, will stay alive, they will marry even goyim, but their children will be Jewish. So it's a miscalculation and he didn't succeed it. Many generations after, many generations after came Haman. Haman. And Haman also, same project. He wants to get rid of the Jewish nations. So we learn from the history. Esau tried to learn from Kai. Paro tried to learn the, of the miscalculation of Esau. And Paro also missed it. Why? Because he, he, his, his plan was to leave the girls. Says Haman, I will do a Perfect work. No, no sentiments. Le'ashmid, le'arog, u'le'abed et kol ha'yehudim. Anashim, nashim, v'tav, tav v'nashim, everyone in one day. So you see, there is a progress over here. They're trying to learn from the mistakes of the formers in order to get rid of the Jews. Did Haman succeed? No. Ve'akadosh baruch hu matzilenu miyadam. They're planning, planning, planning. Now here is the punchline of this Midrash. After the Midrash mentioned Cain, Asa, Haman, Paro and Haman, the Midrash goes to Gogu Magog at the end of days. And listen to what the Midrash says. The Midrash says that Gogu Magog at the end of days will have the same project. 
to get rid of the Jews. And he will recalculate again and take all the mistakes that all the former anti-Semites before him did. And he will get to the right conclusion. He will say, you know what? Everyone tried and failed. Everyone. Esav, Paro, Haman. I have to really verify why. They, they were smart. They tried to, to but they, they, they failed. I know what's the reason. The reason is that there is a protector who protects the Jews. And it doesn't matter what we want to we try to do, he will protect them. So this is a problem why we could not get rid of them. And this is true. But do you think he gave up? He said, no, I understand the problem. Let me deal with the problem. The protector protecting them. Let's get rid of the protector. <laughs> That's what the Medrash says. I will fight the protector. Because as long as we not get rid of him, the Jewish people will survive. And the question is, you're smart. You made all this calculation. How exactly you plan to fight the protector? You understand that the protector is not a human being, right? If not, he didn't understand what, the, the, what is the obstacle. He verified the obstacle. The obstacle is God. Now he said, I'm not giving up. I want to kill the Jewish people. I will get rid of the obstacle. The obstacle is God. How? And here, I'm coming to my theory again. Very interesting way to get rid of God. Russians are atheists, right? What are they doing? Convince everyone that there is no such a thing. No God, no spirituality. You're crazy. Everything, only the tangible things, that's reality. And that was the idea of communism, of, 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 of Russia, right? They were not the only atheists, but the Medrash says that he's going to get rid of God. So if I convince the world, and especially the Jews, that there is no God, then I'll fight the obstacle. Why he will protect them if he will know that they deny him? And that's what they did successfully. The vast majority in Jew, of Jews today has doubts, at least doubts, if there is God. Some of them decide that there is no. The communists, forget about it. The Russia, I, I see it, the Jews that came from Russia after their 70 years of, of being under the communist regime, they do, if you talk about God with them, they think you're crazy. They think you're primitive completely. Very interesting way, says Hashem in the Medrash. The Medrash says, you dare to fight with me? He's speaking to God, to Gog. You dare to fight with me? I'm going to make you the tool in order to prove to the world that there is God. You know how? By the gog Umagog war. You will come with all the power, with all the physical, and I'll show you that the physical is nothing compared to the creator of the universe. This is the reason. And that is the part that we could cover today. We have another, of course, what, how we, and what the other description in the other prophets in the Bible about this, and that will do Bezat Hashem next time.